we're going to go on now and review the ketogenic diet and why or why not that might be a good option for you to try. The definition, according to the National Cancer Institute, is it is a diet high in fat and low in carbohydrates, also known as sugars, that will cause the body to break down fat into molecules called ketones. Ketones circulate in the blood and become the main source of energy for the cells in the body. All right, we're going to make this simpler. That's the formal definition. But first of all, um, where did this ketogenic diet come from? It dates way back to the 1920s. Um, this guy named Dr. Russell Wilder um, at the Mayo Clinic developed it as a treatment for epilepsy. And it works really well. Even to this day, we use this diet here in this hospital, especially with our pediatric populations. But they found that the ketones help control seizures because they interact with the neurotransmitters in the brain. So... That's where it came from. But then along came Dr. Atkins in the 1970s, and he kind of revived interest in this low-carb, high-fat, high-protein approach to promote weight loss. So the Atkins diet was born, and the main difference here is he was promoting a little more protein than um, Dr. Wilder was back in the 20s. Here's a good visual of the calorie distribution on a ketogenic diet. Notice the big blue area. 65 to 70 percent of your calories are coming from fat. That's a lot of fat. Carbs are only at five to 10 percent, and your protein is 20 to 25 percent. The standard American diet has about 50 to 60 percent carbs, so you can see a real shift here in our macronutrients. And if you take a look at a standard 2,000 calorie diet, which on average is what most of us would need, give or take, on a keto diet, 1,500 of these calories would come from fat. That is a whopping 167 grams, a lot of fat. 400 calories from protein, and that gives you 100 grams there, which is a good amount, but you only get 100 calories from carbs, and it's 25 grams. And that is very, very challenging to do. It takes a lot of discipline because carbs are everywhere in our universe, and they go down really easy. So how does ketosis work? Um, a traditional diet, you know, high in carb, you're going to eat your carbs and your glucose or your blood sugar levels are going to rise. Your pancreas comes to the rescue and secretes insulin and insulin is going to escort those glucose molecules into your cell and then we use them for energy. With a keto diet, we don't have those carbs to use. So your glucose levels are going to fall and um, your your um, liver is going to re, um, transform the fats into your energy source, which is the ketones. So it's a roundabout way of getting energy to your cells without rising, your, without your sugars rising. We're going to talk about Dr. Otto Warburg. because He, way back when, said he discovered the real cause of cancer. He even won a Nobel Prize for it back in 1931. And he was really looking at the metabolism of tumors and how they responded to, you know, ketones versus sugar. So we're kind of He's the guy we have to give credit to for this whole area of interest with sugar and cancer. And hence we have the Warburg effect. I'll explain the complicated definition is the cancer cells are gonna rewire their metabolism to promote growth and survival and proliferation and long-term maintenance. The common feature is the altered metabolism and glu glucose uptake and fermentation of glucose to lactate, whatever, whatever. But anyway, in other words, cancer cells have a strong preference for sugar when compared to healthy cells. Cancer cells are also unable to use ketones for energy, so they starve. So in theory, this makes perfect sense, right? Get rid of the sugar, add the ketones, the cancer cells can't survive and all is good. But in real life, things are always a little more complicated. Um, the research doesn't back this up as strong as we wish it did. They use this word possibly provide some benefit, um, especially with the gliomas or the brain or the brain cancers that we see. Studies in animals are showing promise, but human studies are still inconclusive. Um, there might be something to the elevated insulin levels that happen when you're eating a high carb diet. That may be a factor too that needs to be studied. Good news is no adverse effects were observed in those following a keto diet. So it seemed to be safe to at least give it a try. <clears throat> And both intermittent fasting and the keto diet have shown some benefit when you're going through chemotherapy, a reduction in some drug toxicity and improved quality of life. I've had have had a few patients going through chemo here who have, you know, opted to give this a try and, you know, they've done pretty well with it. 
And for those of you that want to learn a lot more, really read some articles on this. There was one published in the Journal of Nutrient in May of 2021, which really gave a nice overview of the potential health benefits of the keto diet. 